All right. Sorry, guys, we're still getting used to this Zoom stuff. My name is Denise. I'm a health freedom activist in the state of California, and I live in the San Joaquin Valley. Hi, I'm Heidi, and I am a co-founder of Freedom Angels, and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. Hi, I'm Tara, also co-founder of the Freedom Angels in the Northern Sierra Nevada Mountains of California. So today we're going to have a conversation about what's going on um, across the nation and around the world with these lockdowns and this virus. Um, we, well, there's four of us, and we're going to get into a story on how Freedom Angels was formed. But as most of you know, we resisted SB 276, and we stood on chairs together with our friend Stephanie, um, helping us navigate this. So we're going to talk to you how you can resist what's going to happen and get ideas from you as well on how we can move forward and protect our, our freedoms. So, all right. Now, what do you guys want to start with? We, we already started talking, so let's just continue to flow with it because we had a great conversation on what we can do as a state of the resist to state our resistance to what's happening with these overreaching governments. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we were just talking about, um, we'll start off with fear right away. Let's get fear out of the, mm -hmm. out of the way. I know fear is what's driving everybody's reptilian brain right now. Um, we can't think with our whole entire brain because we're in survival mode right now. Um, so really doing whatever it takes to center yourself, to be meditating, to be strong in your spiritual practice, to, to connect with God, um, so that you get your, get access to, to who you are, to your humanity. And, um, I think that a lot of people I found as I've been engaging with others, they're really scared. They're so scared to say anything or make waves or to call their mayor or to call their sheriff because they feel like they're gonna end up being on a list. And um, my word that I wanted to share was that, guys, you're already on a list. You've yeah. been on a list for a long time. So they already Anytime, know are. Yeah, a vaccine word gets you on the list. I mean, there's so many, there's so many words that will get you on a list, but you know, we shouldn't live in fear like that it doesn't matter if they have your name. This is something that we have to protect. We have to protect our kids. I mean, Heidi, I put my phone number out on the internet. That's right. <laughs> you know, because um, I mean, there's a point to where you're fed up and there's just nothing that anybody's going to do anymore. That's, that's going to shock you because I stood there when they passed 276. I forgot which meeting it was. And I was so fed up and I'm like, just, I'm just going to give you guys my phone number. It was on YouTube. Like got to stop being scared. This is the only way that we're going to be able to change things is to stop the fear and grow a tribe. Absolutely. And it's because she put her number out publicly. I texted her right away and look what happened because of that. And I have to say that last night, a mom who I don't know, um, or I mean, we, I, we've interacted a little bit on social media. She reached out and shared some really, really tough, challenging stuff that she's going through right now. And I immediately responded back with my number. I'm like, we're past this. Like, we don't need any more of like hiding behind social media, um, you know, screens or anything like that. Like, we need to be connecting directly. You have my phone number, you use it whenever you want. Like, don't worry about it. I turn it off when I need it off and it, when it's on, it's on and it's all going to work out. And more than anything right now, we need to be connecting with one another personally, not just through the facade of social media, because we were talking about Trump's press conference today. And one of the things that he said was that the internet and the phone lines are being overwhelmed because of this lockdown and Denise you said something just fascinating about that well the, what, how they said it was it was essential what would I say essential data? data essential data so so they're not really gonna give you a blackout right they don't want to scare you 
So they're going to call it essential data. So you're, what you're requesting isn't going to be, it's not important. It's not more important than taking care of this COVID-19, right? So you're not going to be blacked out. You're just not important right now and you're not going to be able to get your data. So you're kind of going to be on your, in the dark. And the only way that we're going to be able to stop that is and not be separated. Because once we're separated, we're kind of screwed. You know, I mean, it takes, it takes people to protect. And uh, it's, I suggest you guys exchange phone numbers, exchange email addresses with your very trusted friends, um, share your location. So if they need help, you know, they can get to you. But we also, we were able to build, if anybody's on Telegram, um, Heidi set up a Telegram channel called Freedom Angels. And it's not for conversation. It is for calls to action. So if you are interested in getting boots on the ground, please uh, follow the channel and we'll be able to send you information on what's going on uh, in your area. And um, it's so, you know, calling it essential data is so, you know, that's the new narrative here. What's essential and what's non-essential, you know, and that's how we're segregating, you know, the current process right now, the situation that we're in. And, you know, back to what you were saying about um, connecting in person and connecting with numbers and connecting and being, not being afraid to speak your point, your voice on this, you know, it's a whole different world than it was pre coronavirus. Cause someone asked me today, how was fighting 276 in California? Did, you know, did, how were, how was the message heard by the general population? And I said, they didn't even know about it. The general population doesn't even <laughs> didn't even know it was occurring and yeah. even people within our own movement didn't know what was happening or it was happening or they'd be affected or people who had medical exemptions didn't even know that they were about to lose them um but that has been completely changed now because what we're dealing with is a situation where the entire world is affected and awoke and aware of nothing but the new reality that we're living which is uh, a restructuring of our society. And yeah. the important thing to know is that this is, we do have the power. You know, we are all yeah. in this together. And this is in our hands to determine how we go forward and what we choose and what we accept. But we've real, we can see that we're gonna have to fight for it. The reality that we want, we're gonna have to fight for it. And in that video, we talked about that, uh, um, Bobby that RFK Jr. posted on Instagram out of China a couple days ago, yesterday or the day before. One of the things they say in it is we've won this through social solidarity. And it, that couldn't be more true about how we need to win this moving forward. Uh, you know, it's going to be between two narratives and, and, and it's going to, we know there's going to be social solidarity on both narratives. And so your voice matters, like getting out and talking to family members, talking to neighbors, talking to people you work with, talking to community leaders, are reaching back into the legislature and into the, you know, the, the administration is going to be important because we're going to have, we have two, we're going to ultimately essentially have two distinct narratives that we're going to be fighting for, for how to move forward in this. Absolutely. And I was also thinking about just how we talked yesterday about um, the psychological warfare, the seed of distrust that we have for each other. Um, I've been really like meditating on that more. And I just want people to start thinking about, so I'm really going to pick up the phone to call the sheriff or to fill an online form out to tell on my neighbor or somebody I know, instead of picking up the phone to call that neighbor and ask what is going on. Do you know what I'm saying? Like where the world has gone that we can't even do face to face, um, you know, questioning, like asking like, hey, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like you have no idea why the person is out doing what they're doing. You have no idea if they've just lost a loved one or they're coming down off a drug addiction and that's why they're out in the open space or they're driving to wherever they're driving to. You know what I'm saying? Like why a child might be playing on a playground. We, wow. Why are we not going to the person and doing about face to face? Why? Why? Or how about Lakeview, New Jersey? Yes. You know, where they, I mean, that's huge. That, and that is, 
if you ever wondered how Nazi Germany Germany came about, yeah. this is exactly you know a family was holding a, a bar mitzvah for their yeah bar mitzvah for their child and under I think just under fifty people and they were you know, the police were called on them and they were charged, the prosecutor, the local prosecutor charged them with um, criminal, with um, child endangerment for all five of their children. And um, we hear that there's word coming out that um, I think it's already public that, but with not a bill number, that there's a legislator seeking to put um, legislation in, in New Jersey to cr really criminalize, come down with even harder criminal um, consequences for such actions, you know, even this essentially usurping even more power than even the governor is seeking to have. Well, seeking. the other day, I saw a post of a mother who showed her court documents. Her child was removed from her custody because she worked in a hospital and she was exposed to coronavirus. So the dad was given custody. I mean, this is where we're at. We have neighbors calling CPS on their neighbors for their children playing in the park. I mean, this is, that's a huge, that's a huge step forward, to, you know, to go from letting, you know, ignoring kids at the park, letting them play, I mean, and calling an agency to physically remove a child from their parents. This is horrendous. And I don't, I don't think we're ever going to be able to get back to, this is, we're, we're in a completely different world. Either way, either way it goes, we're in a completely different world. And I know this brings up Heidi's, uh, you know, Q stuff. She, she doesn't like it. She doesn't follow it. And we're all very different. I follow it. But I would never tell somebody to sit back and trust a plan. Like, you can still follow. You can still hope and pray that, you know, th these things are correct and this is really going to happen. But it's irresponsible to sit back and just, Say, I'm just going to trust the plan and I'm going to trust people to come and save me. We are the Calvary. Nobody is coming to save us. Like, it is us. And if we sit back and let this happen, we're going to be a sci fi movie by the end of this. You know, it's super scary. I want people to stand up. And like Heidi said, call your sheriff's office. There's so many there's the sheriff's office, public health officer, the Office of Emergency Services, your local police department. You know, I mean, these are all places that you can call. Your sheriff is your best friend. Get involved locally like that. I mean, it's super important to start talking about it and getting involved on your local pages and just start talking about, you know, hey, this is really, we need to be paying attention to this and start collecting people to go and make these phone calls with you. I mean, it's time to start getting active. <laughs> this is, it's way yeah. past it. Right. So if we're well, calling the authorities, it's because we're calling them to understand what, you know, the policy is. Like we're asking questions, we're, we're um, doing due diligence, we're doing our homework. We're not calling the authorities to rat out our neighbor. Are no. you kidding me? We never should be doing that before we've had a physical conversation first, one-on-one, -on -one, to understand when you make assumptions, you know how the saying goes. You make a giant ass out of you and me. So folks, stop with assumptions about why people are out and about. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I fully agree on the Q stuff too. Um, I'm all about like, yeah, let the Q stuff be real, but don't, don't plan as if it is. Like I always say right. the same thing, yeah, the, you know, the Calvary isn't coming. We are the Calvary. And if we the, really just so plan as if, you know, it's in your hands because it is in our hands. And like we were saying about earlier about taking your friends' names and numbers down, also write down the names and addresses and numbers of all the different and emails on, on paper and pen of, of your mayor, of your public mm -hmm. health officer, of your sheriff, of your, you know, uh, county prosecutor, mm -hmm. of the, um, you know, the state you know, the state agencies you want to be connected to, too, like the governors, your legislators, have that stuff written down in a black book, too, just so that you got it. And yeah, never, ever, ever, like, snitch on people in an environment like this. This is, like, that's communist Russia. That's, like, that's communist China. That's, you know, we've learned those histories, those lessons through history. You, this is not how you do it at all. And 
and in line at grocery stores shaming people because they're five feet apart or they stepped ahead. Stop that. It's like, stop that shit, right? I mean, I know. I agree. Give people grace. I agree. I think that is how we resist it. We resist it in peacefully standing our ground. Like we are radiating love and hope. We are not standing six feet away from each other, radiating fear and distrust and, oh my God, I'm going to die. Like that's not what we radiate as we're standing and looking people eye to eye and having conversations. Like center yourself, folks. The fear really works, yeah. you know, you scare somebody enough into feeling like, nah, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's those, those fears coming from a person who shares custody. It's a really different lifestyle versus someone who has a child, you know, with their partner, current partner. I have to worry, okay, if I go to the store and I expose myself, then I'm going to expose my kids who are then going to go to their other, his other house and expose that family and the list is going to go on and then it's going to be a shit storm and I'm going to be the bad guy. You know, like <laughs> there's always those fears of, I cannot, I have to think differently and you know, it sucks, but we're exposed to things all the time. I can't be fearful of what my son is going to be exposed to or what I'm going to be exposed to. I can be exposed to anything. So, you know, it is a fear, but you bring yourself back. And you bring yourself back to your knowing and to that part of you that understands how illnesses work, how you, what you can do to protect yourself and just understand it's not going, you know, how your system's going to react. So bring yourself back. I see a lot of parents who are panicked. I get a lot of questions on this custody stuff and my, that's my best advice. You know, I, I get where people are coming from. It's a really hard road to stay on because you have to think of both households. Bring yourself back. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have your knowing, you know exactly what's going on. And we are here and Heidi had a really great post on how to protect your immune system, how to boost it. I mean, there's things we can do to protect our families versus hiding in our houses for 30 days until they tell us we can come out and play now. Well, I think um, the important thing is those conversations that we need to be having um, out in public or reaching out to the people we've talked about, the different agencies that are now um, in charge of these decisions now that we're under emergency orders. You know, the, like we said, from mayors to governors to public health officers to sheriff's departments to, you know, how it's all rolling out is the big pieces are saying, you know, we do not accept like that we're going to be required to have mandatory testing of antibodies and essentially immunity certificates to be allowed to participate in society, um, whether it be job, play, work, whatever it is, or that we're also not gonna support surveillance tracking. Um, I think one of the things that we can talk about that we can do is we really need to start teaching people how to turn off their location data like we did last week. We need to kind of keep reminding, like, have you turned off? This is how you make sure all your tracking data is off because we're not going to participate in this, this acceptance of our, a new norm and for entry into civilization again or society to be, um, you know, antibody testing, required antibody testing or, and surveillance data tracking. No way. That's, those, that's the alternate view of the future that we have to be pushing for. Like, we don't, we're not going to do it that way. And those, you have to have the conversations with people and reach back out to them to let them know. There's mayors that don't know where anyone stands because they're just in their, we're just in our houses. And there's, you know, public health officers that don't know. They're just making these decisions yep. isolated. Just like the doctors and nurses who are making decisions in hospitals. And we don't know if someone who's in there is getting what treatment they're getting or when or what's happening because the chain of connection or command has been like broken. Yep. Um, I was just going to say, are we willing? I think one of the biggest ways that we can resist is letting go of this. Like they talk about the darkness that is potentially coming where the internet outage or phone outage or we're not. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Now they can still track you through that, but right. for sure. But I mean, it is kind of ridiculous. Like my kids are doing Zoom and we can talk about Zoom too in a minute, which is huge. I'm a Waldorf 
person. So I really cross the line with allowing my kids to uh, participate in something Zoom uh, affiliated. But um, what was I saying with the Zoom? Oh, so some of the people have said like, do you actually have a computer or only a phone? Like how many households now even have a computer? Like that's so fascinating. Yeah. My house has a couple adults in it. And so there's a couple of phones. We do have one computer and that's it, but we have more mobile devices than, um, than a computer. Um, see how like we, this has, we've become a slave to this. This, yeah. this has become our master and our people, part of the resisting will be saying, no, I'm going to set this down. How in the world did we navigate the world and get directions anywhere prior to this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I went to college, I remember I got that, you know, the Thomas guide. I mean, it was like this big to navigate LA all by myself <laughs> where I'm a farm girl coming out to the big old city. <laughs> And if I could do it, like we all did it. That's the thing. Like, how can we not forget that it's still possible? Um, but I think that's one, one big way because just turning oh. location services, people who know tech a lot, this phone is still tracking you even off if it's moving around with you. So yeah. you have to literally leave it or you need to start carrying around a Faraday bag and putting your phone in a Faraday bag. That, that's basically your, your two options, but it's, it's tracking you everywhere. We're exactly where they wanted us to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this was a master plan, like brilliant. What, what's been done to us. Mm -hmm. We've been so, yeah, we want to quick, quick, quick. Everything is about being quick and, and convenient. Yeah. So if this well, black out right now, go ahead, Tara. Oh, go ahead. Well, I mean, we're, this has been, this is a shock and awe campaign that we're all living in. I mean, none of us, and that's, that's a masterful way to do it. This is how you do it. And I mean, we know that this has been modeled and experienced, you know, discussed before. Um, you know, I see some, some people asking, like, you know, saying, I'm ready to march in the streets six feet apart. I mean, honestly, we're going to be getting to those places. We're going to have to desegregate the essential and the non-essential. You know, we're going to have to refuse um, you know, certificates to enter back into society. And, and so, you know, starting with these conversations, you know, another person asked like, who are the, what are the best questions to ask the sheriff and officers? Start getting people's position on this yeah. and, and, and expressing your position, letting them know, start a conversation. I you want you to know the governor, you know, wherever state you're in, there's been signaling that we're going to be required to have antibody testing and surveillance testing to participate back, enter back into workforces or to be allowed to stay in work for you know, the workforce or school or entertainment. What is your position on this? Like just start probing for, for questions and positions and letting them know where you stand and say, you know, so that they see, so that people understand. Because one thing we know, I'm sure all of us who have, uh, you know, friends on Facebook or social media and, um, and our approved friend to request or see people out in other um, places at, at get rallies or gatherings, you know that we have countless allies. We, we yeah. always have just in the health freedom movement. And now this has gone far beyond. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and when you see and meet them, you can tell that every person, like you, you could never pick them out who they are going to be. Trust that, that, there are more people than you maybe realize on your side. Let's drown out the voices that are, you know, calling in out of fear um, for these lockdowns and for turning people in and to remove all liberties for an ounce of perceived security. Let's trust that, you know, that there is more than enough of us, and this is far beyond the health freedom movement, to, yeah. to forge a different way forward, to push back, to, you know, that's what's driving all this, like get out on all the different forms of in engagement mm -hmm. and, and connect and push back the vision. Don't be afraid anymore about what's politically correct to talk about or what you're going to be shamed for. It's shame on them for, you know, attacking you for, you know, what you might be saying and advocating because nobody is saying or advocating anything that doesn't hold the greatest care, utmost care for, um, and compassion 
for people's health and well-being. That's what we're actually advancing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I am ready. I mean, I've seen some people go to the Capitol and protest out there six feet apart. And it's, you know, these are little things you can do to resist what's happening. There are, there are a lot of people who do not want this type of world. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's no longer a movement. Like this isn't the health freedom. It's no longer a patriot movement. It is right. humanity is yep. coming together yep. and saying we cannot possibly live in a world where we have to track ourselves like cattle and we have to mm -hmm. just sit back and allow them to take our freedoms because we're at a crossroads right here. This is the moment. This moment in time right now is the moment where you have to pick a side and you have to stand firm regardless because you're going to have a lot of people to support you. And, and like Tara said, either way, either way it goes, there's, there's people who are going to have your back. But this is a moment in time that we have to start talking and getting together and saying no and resisting what's going to happen because we can't live in that world. That's a very scary world. I do not want my mm -hmm. children to be in. Well, and the, the, um, well, I was like I say, the best thing, the thing about this is the health freedom movement. We, the people in this movement are, are so perfectly positioned to help educate and direct mm -hmm. the conversation on this because we know all its angles better than any other movement or peoples. We have lived and breathed all the pieces of this moment in time. Um, and, and so we can, you know, speak on health and immunity. We can speak on science and data. We can connect with, uh, you know, scientists doing independent and, and accredited work. You know, we can, we can do all the pieces. Plus, we're connected into each other and we're connected into legislatures. I mean, if, if ever there was a time for our, that the world needs the knowledge and the care and the, and the efforts of the people that have been working in the health freedom movement, it's now. And, and again, we were made for this. We've been, all that we've learned mm -hmm. and all that we, you know, through the years, this is what this moment in time needs. It needs our information and our connections and our knowledge on this. We've been waiting for this. We knew this was going to happen. You know, we, like you said, we've been prepping. So I have been telling people like on my Instagram lives, cause I'm, I'm kicked off Facebook by the way, um, <laughs> for talking about child abuse. So I'm on Instagram and I'm sorry, my kids are, I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. We get it. I was just going to say we're getting close to um, 530. Um, I just wanted to put out my call to action was, you know, we don't know, but Trump said what he said today in the press conference about possibly three days or more. So many people from so many sides are saying something could happen tomorrow. All I'm saying is better to be safe than sorry in the sense of don't get caught with your pants around your ankles. So before you go to bed tonight, take your phone out, start getting a piece of paper and writing down everybody's phone number and address so that you have it backed up hard copy as well in case something goes down with the phone. And you better make sure that you have neighbors or somebody that you're connecting with that you can um, communicate with if we really don't have the data um, to be talking to each other. Sorry guys, but and yeah, I was, make friends with your local health, health activists is what I was saying before I had to go. I mean, we're on Instagram, there's so many people, you can hashtag your states, uh, like state, state health freedom or whatever you, whoever you follow, make friends with us. We have been prepping for this mm -hmm. and we can help you navigate the homeschooling and the, you know, had the homeopathy and all the great things that we have. So start connecting with people. It's really important to start looking for like-minded people. Otherwise you're going to be afraid all the time. And, you know, we'll keep talking about what resistance looks like. And because this is all unfolding, you know, moment to moment. I mean, we're looking into, you know, what due process and, you know, habeas corpus issues are here going on. Like what, potential pushbacks we have, what layers can we start stepping up in expressing our 
the word, you know, the, uh, that we want to be engaged in this process, how we're going to engage in this process to keep the world, you know, to create a world that we want, that we should all live in, that protects liberties and can protect health and well-being all at the same time, because there's no reason we can't do all of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap it up tonight. We realize this may be possibly the last time we get access to the internet. Um, we look forward to joining you again as soon as we can. Remember, we have a Telegram channel. It's Freedom Angels um, Foundation. Our email is freedomangels at protonmail.com. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. Um, if you know any of us, you should be reaching out and getting our phone numbers as well. And you should also be getting everybody else's phone numbers, emails, and addresses. Yep. So please share this live. Um, start a watch party. We have, as usual, been censored in the world of Facebook. And uh, we're trying to get our YouTube channel up. So the videos will be transferred over there. But we would appreciate the shares and comments to bump up, to continue to bump up the video. Yeah, and if you're watching this on the replay, type replay. Like, type anything, any emoji. Everything helps. This information is vital for us to stay connected because more than anything, we need to be connected right now. Yeah. Absolutely. We cannot, we can't lose each other. We'll be in a lot of trouble if we get separated. All right, guys. So are we at 30 minutes, Heidi? Yep. All right. Yep. So yep. we will see you tomorrow at our um, live at five from our mm -hmm. Freedom Angels Facebook page. So I will see you guys later. Bye. Good night. Good night.